documentary on stand-up comedy, you know? And more specifically, a documentary on the roots of stand-up comedy. And what could this documentary be called? Stand-up comedy is something everybody enjoys. But how did comedians like Peter Kay, Russell Howard and Michael McIntyre climb to the top of the comedy ladder? Open mic nights are hosted by various venues in and around London and allow new comedians to showcase their talents in front of a live audience. Up the Creek is a comedy club in Greenwich, East London, and every Thursday they host their weekly new act night. We caught up with organiser and promoter Catherine Webb to hear what she had to say. Why do you think new comedians come to these stand-up comedy nights? Because they've got to learn their craft. You need to learn their craft, and you learn it on the stage, you can't learn it in your bedroom, you can't learn it talking to yourself in a mirror. You've got to learn it actually doing it on the stage, and these are the nights to do it. Stand-up comedy, like sex, can both be ended by the phrase, get off your shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> I actually uh, proposed to, to my girlfriend the other day. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She she didn't text back. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're a new comedian on the circuit. Yeah, I'm not uh, not quite as new as some of the people on this gig. I've been going, uh, going about uh, just over four years. So I, I, I do gigs like this just to, to sort of like keep my eye in. So I'm trying to. It's like if you go a week without gigging, then you're, when you, you're all rusty when you're gigging again. You're just, you're I'm overweight because I've got quite a bizarre relationship with food. Like, again, you've probably heard comedians before saying like, oh, you know what it's like when you get drunk and you start craving kebabs. Uh, I can take that one step further. You know what it's like when you get drunk deliberately with the specific intention of craving kebabs? <laughs> <laughs> Henry certainly knows how to work his audience, but he does have a long way to go before he becomes a professional stand-up. We caught up with professional stand-up comedian Adam Ethan Crow, who regularly performs at places like this. Um, what does it take to have a successful career in stand-up comedy? Um, persistence, uh, and obviously to be funny. Some people are naturally funny, some people are good uh, joke writers. I think it comes down to a mix of both. But um, I, when I first started out, I worked with a few comics. There was a guy called Ray Davis who was really, really good. But he just did, he'd have bad gigs, and rather than keep going back, he, you know, he, he just gave up. And uh, you know, I, th I think mainly it's persistence and belief. If you really believe in what you're doing, then you know, uh, you'll, you'll keep going. Um, so yeah, I think persistence and belief in yourself. According to Time Out magazine, there are, on average, 12 different comedy clubs to go to on any night of the week. Over 50% of these clubs provide contact details. That makes over six opportunities to perform every night. But with so many new comedians fighting for their dream careers, persistence is the key. To some performers, open mic nights are just a hobby. To others, it's a possible career path. But can open mic nights really provide a gateway to a career in stand-up comedy? I, I mean, I've, I've been pursuing a career with a sort of limited amount of success for some time now. But mainly because uh, I, I basically, you know, when I was 18, I started doing stand-up pretty much instead of going to university. So since then, this has been pretty much my only sort of career route, and I'm just sticking out. When you start out, get your head down and just work hard. Do the gigs and fail. Failure is good. When you fail and you fall over and nobody laughs and everybody hates you and it's all horribly wrong, you learn from that. And that what you, what you learn from gigs like that is a lot more advantageous than when the gig goes good. I think a lot of the, some some people start off uh, as a hobby. They think, well, let's see if I can do it. Um, some people do start off believing in the next big thing. And some people genuinely, you know, are the next big thing. I was working with Russell Kane. He had done eight gigs. He was doing, that's all, eight open mic spots. That's all he'd done. And um, uh, I phoned up Danny off the curb, which is open mic production. I said, you've got to see this guy, he's great. And uh, Russell now is kicking ass and taking names, you know. But eight gigs in, you could see he had something, there was something going on, you know. And that's the thing, it, it's... It might start off as a hobby, but when, if, when you start getting that reaction, there's nothing like it. When you, when you do a gig, like do Reading Festival or Leeds Festival, and you've got 6,000 people in a circus tent, and you're on stage holding court, and they're listening to everything you say, dude, there's nothing like it. There's no going back. So, yeah, I, I think that some people maybe start off as a hobby, but the moment they get the bug, they, they, they obviously try and make it a career. They chase the rush. You've got to. You got to. It's amazing. It's really cool. So, Joe Wells, uh, you won the Comedy Central Live Funniest Student of the Year competition this year. What is it like starting out as a new comedian who's just won a competition? Um, it's, well, I, I've been 
go for three years in the middle of hard work for those three years, so it's just sort of starting to pay off a bit, starting to uh, sort of break even uh, as opposed to make money, uh, but I'm not losing money on it anymore, so that's good. You can't be a new comedian without having heard of or considered entering a competition. There are countless competitions for new comics, like the Laughing Horse New Act of the Year competition, which showcases over 500 new acts every year. There's also FHM's Stand Up Hero competition, offering a £5,000 prize for the winner and expert coaching from top comedian Ed Byrne. And So You Think You're Funny, whose past winners include Peter Kay, Dylan Moran and Lee Mack. But you can only enter this one once, so make sure you're prepared. Imran Yusuf, Hello, you're yes. a professional stand-up comedian, am I right? Yes, that's correct. Professional stand-up comedian. How okay. long have you been a professional stand-up comedian for? Oh, I've, been go I've gone full-time since last summer. So, and I've been going long before that as a kind of part-time or amateur. But now it's my full-time. You see me on TV. So. <laughs> have you taken part in any competitions? Uh, oh yeah, I've been in all the comedy competitions. Man. I've been in more comedy competitions than probably any other comedian. There was a lot that things to do back in the day that I didn't do anymore. And I've been in a lot of competitions. I've come through that system. And one thing I learned about comedy competitions is that it's, they're really good at finding talent and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, this isn't a race. This isn't about, I want that competition, boom. It's about, it's a marathon. It's all about becoming the best you can become. And really, as comedians, you know that, like, you know, one of my inspirations is Chris Rock. And it took him 10 years to really become any good before he became big. That's the way I look at it. Well, there's loads of competitions. FHM just finished running one for new comedians. Um, the comedy store do a, a gong night. There's loads of places you can go. Uh, you need to get yourself together about a good five minutes, get your, a copy of Time Out or some listings with uh, comedy clubs in and phone them up, go down there and try it. Because when you start out, you're never entirely sure if you're that funny. The funniest person I know is my brother, Rich. Um, he's not a comedian. He reads Viz all the time. He can do all the impressions from family. He is hilarious. We will go out. Um, uh, there's a whole load of us for, um, I think it might have been Daru Breen's, but somebody's birthday, comedian's birthday, and all the comedians in the world were there. And we're all hanging out, drinking and talking crap. And Rich is holding court more than any comedian because he's a naturally funny guy. But he's tried getting on stage, and when he gets on stage, he falls apart and he can't do it. So it really is a case of um, just practicing. See, once you go on stage, the moment you get your first big laugh, you'll know whether it's for you or not. Sure. Basically, if you want to become a stand-up comedian, be in it with the love of the game and just work hard, spend years going and doing loads of gigs every day that you can afford to do it. And just keep, 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 and keep, and when it gets really bad and if it's horrible and you want to quit, that's when you do even more gigs and you push even harder. And then when that, and eventually, you will become good, you will become great, and then everything will come to you. You'll become good enough that people go, I need to book this guy, I need to sign this guy, I need to get this guy on TV because then you'll be able to like become really valuable and get yourself some of that you know, famous stardom that I'm about to get. Stand-up comedy is certainly an interesting and exciting career path, but it requires motivation, persistence, and most of all, the ability to make people laugh. I do something I enjoy, I earn a living from it. Um, yeah, I, I think, is it, wasn't it, um, uh, I think it was Byron or someone who said, if you find a job you love, you never work a day in your life. I think that's kind of where I'm coming from. Quite lucky guy. Uh, Mark walks into a bar. Oh. 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 Oh.